Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Lion's Den Show. And here's your host, Cody Robert Judy. Hello and welcome to the Lion's Den Show. I'm your host and your toast, Cody Robert Judy. Today is um, December 20th, uh, 2010, and we're going to tackle a big issue today that is plaguing us as a society from different directions that not too many people understand, from which we have all heard, like entitlements and Social Security, Medicare, welfare programs, uh, divorce and marriage, and even the problem revolving around immigration and the security of our borders. These are all issues politicians uh, tackle and are voted in uh, to with their promises and, and solutions that with a majority vote they, they'll get to represent. Now it's no secret anymore, most of these issues I've outlined are failing miserably and are acting as an iceberg did upon the Titanic. In layman's terms, these issues have ruptured society's big ship in America. And there's no dispute across party lines about that, on the fact that we are sinking, and sinking pretty fast, and that we cannot sustain what we'd like to without some significant changes. Believe me, the, the, the hope and change of Obama hasn't a clue on how to solve these problems, because they are attacking them from the same directions as past administrations have, that are contributing to the iceberg, which is debt so enormous that it's hitting us and sinking the ship. Sometimes it takes money to make money, <clears throat> and this administration, as well as past administrations, is and has been engaged in the stimulus of our economic plight. However, the root of the problem still remains unaddressed, but it's there, just like an open gash in our ship, and bailing water with big pumps isn't going to fix the ocean pouring in. We've got to get to the root of the problem. Uh, as some of you may know, I graduated from USU with a BA major in psychology and with a minor in sociology. These arenas have to do with issues that we call micro and macro issues. Micro meaning as the individual is a single unit in a big picture, also forming smaller groups in the big picture of society, which is the macro level. These concerns delve into issues that become political in nature and all of a sudden politicians are supposed to be experts in social arenas affecting every individual but they're not really experts. I've had some people ask me why I refer to the Bible so much. Well the Bible is one big social, psychological, political report if you want to look at it. If you just boil it down, I don't think anyone on earth is as expert as God is when it comes to raising rearing children. <laughs> Within the Bible we find precious jewels that are answers to the problems that societies of the past um, have, have faced and uh, we can use those as answers and solutions for our society's problems just as easily. Everyone says hindsight is 2020 because you can see the problem as well as know the solution with perfect vision. It stands to reason we would not have to uh, I've had to go through uh, the problems um, had we found the solutions that eliminate the problem uh, you had if you'd known it in the first place. In short, a whole lot of headache and heartache as well as bloodshed could have been averted if you had considered wise what God has given to you. Like I said, we're going to tackle this from a direction that is really uh, taboo for politicians because it represents a little meat which is something a little bit more than what the scriptures refer to as milk. And I use that reference from Hebrews uh, chapter 5, verse 12 to 14, which is important. It says, For when, for the time, ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, are become such as we have, such as have need of milk, and not of strong meat. In verse 13 it says, For everyone that useth milk is unskillful with the word of righteousness. These are like the many uh, of the politicians that we know today. For he is a babe, it says. And then in verse 14, But strong meat belongeth to them that are full age. 
even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So to many people, while they witness the problems of Social Security and Medicare going bankrupt, and they witness our politicians wanting to massively increase our population with massive immigration, they fail to understand that as a society we have become top-heavy. Our base has become weak. What does that mean? In plain, simple language, it means that baby boomers are beginning to retire. They came from families of five to ten children often. How many of Generation Xers or Generation Ys are not having that many children because they are expensive? I assert that money is available and out there, however, politicians have made it unavailable to many would-be mothers. The baby boomers grew up in an industrial age and didn't have as many children. They still wanted the same benefit, though, as was taken from them in Social Security and Medicare. But they failed as a generation in providing us a society with the base that could sustain them in their elderly years. So what do people in power like Senator John McCain do? They seek a population that can filter in the gaps. Does massive amnesty for a foreign population sound familiar or now make a little more sense? Well, that's what they've tried to do infuse Social Security and Medicare with a population that they failed to create from birth. Well, that's an answer, but it also creates many problems and resentments. The influx of a massive foreign population no doubt has incentive for coming. That, in a nutshell, is poverty driving them out and towards a better way of life. The foreign population comes in and takes a toll on the macro level that is seen from every arena of life, political, economical, and social areas. Language barriers have to be addressed as well as cultural norms and traditions. Some can be good, some can be bad for the society receiving them. Meantime, let's say the baby boomers are expecting the massive immigration they just legalized to perform as their children, but they are not educated like their two kids. And they certainly don't make money to put into Social Security and Medicare programs to, 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 to make up and they can't represent a, 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 they can represent a national security problem or breach causing dangers to those who you're supposed to be protecting. A nation without borders is no nation at all. Makes sense. So not only do the baby boomers not create the population they should have, but they invited in a whole host of other problems that uh, guess who has to deal with? That's right, Generation X and Generation Y. Our incomes didn't grow proportionately with that what was expected of us. The housing crisis and the bubble burst was a witness to that unsustainable level. Well, it crashed. But before it crashed, it was trying to keep up, but it just couldn't sustain itself. We're getting closer to getting back to square one, which began the problems. What do we do to inject a population? How do we grow a population? Well, it turns out good old-fashioned sex is a pretty good idea and a good start in saving Social Security and Medicare over the next 20 years. We need to be responsible, of course. I'm just thinking here now, how many male members in our society do we have in America making over $250,000 that are supporting one woman? What if we increased the population in their household by two more women? What would happen? A few more cat fights? <laughs> That's funny. But we probably can squeeze them into those big, giant, enormous houses. There's probably a few extra bedrooms. So we have the rooms available or bunk beds just doesn't cost that much to feed a couple extra mouths and then all of a sudden the welfare department just had two-thirds of the population it's supporting to get off welfare and housing they are incorporated into a bigger family insurance programs they save money on and I'm just thinking that the population of America increases without any problems in the future coming in the borders 
all the while we save money by cutting costs and increasing the utility of the family core unit. This is just an example of uh, instances of utilizing the micro unit to satisfy the demands of the macro expectation. It reduces the debt upon future generations, which is the opposite of what the baby boomer generation has done, and this can be done quite legally under the roof of God fearing Christians, as Hebrews spoke about by reason of use, having our senses about us and understanding good and evil, understanding responsible versus irresponsible. We'll talk more about this in the future, but rest assured God has answers to these problems and we need to be open to the answers that will fix these problems responsibly for the benefit of our children, which moms and dads all over America can readily understand that are in harmony with the laws of nature and which have been practiced since records were kept. When it comes to the common sense of the core of humanity, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Certainly the nature of humanity hasn't changed, but our levels of pride and entitlements have changed. And we need to address this as painful as it might be in admitting that we were what we're doing isn't exactly bearing good fruit, but it's bearing a mountain of debt to crush our liberty and our freedom. I know that incorrect judgments represent represented in an evil pride and an evil jealousy actually hurt those whom we love much more than we would ever have supposed and that in reality we all need to ask ourselves is that the legacy we really want to give them and be responsible for handing down? Our children are victims of our social evil pride and jealousies. These are sins that are handed down from generation to generation as we read in Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 9 Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them. For I the Lord thy God am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. There are none who are going to get away from this. All of us are pretty much cohorts in this together. So let's start exploring sex and ways and means of having more children in order to prop up our base, cut our costs, and sustain our freedom, liberty, and pursuit of happiness while we still have an opportunity. If anyone wants to jump into this a little bit more, you can purchase my book, Taking a Stand, The Conservative Independent Voice, which is also available on Kindle now. Admittingly, there are a few misspelled words, and that had to do more with the editors and the timeline in running for president. They're bearable, and I, they will be the rare ones. Once they will be, uh, they'll be the ones that will be collector's items in a couple of hundred years into the millennium. <laughs> so hurry and get out and get your copy. God bless you, and God bless America. We're going to get out of this.